Yum, yum! Hey everyone, this is Ed Ferrari from Pixel Fondue, and in this video I'm going to show a technique of using uh, displacements um, and using uh, the gradient layer in the shader tree to uh, create uh, some complex um, kind of displacement patterns um, on very basic geometry. So here you can see my geometry uh, on the left side here. So before we get started, I'll show some things that I have uh, already prepared. Uh, I have two pieces of geometry in separate mesh uh, item layers. Um, I have this part for sort of the tread and this part for kind of like a heel piece, which I'm going to add some, um, some quilted pattern to. Um, so both of these pieces uh, have dedicated UV maps, um, but if I look at them, and I select the polygons of the UV, uh, you can see I've only unwrapped the parts that are going to be displaced, and I've kind of ignored the, the other part that's not going to get any displacement. Um, similarly, on this heel piece, um, I have UVs, and uh, I only have unwrapped the part that's going to receive the displacement effect. Um, now, also, these UVs are uh, oriented in a way uh, that will be used by our grape uh, gradient input parameter. We're going to use um, the U direction, so I wanted to lay these out as uh, flat horizontally as possible. Um, so that's why both the heel piece, uh, or foxing piece, and the uh, tread piece are um, oriented this way. Um, this should be more apparent uh, as I begin working. Um, okay, so the other thing that we have is we have uh, vertex maps, uh, which we're using to mask out areas where we don't want displacement. Um, so for this tread geometry, um, if I just bring up my vertex map here, uh, you can see I've assigned a value of 1, uh, which is a bright red, um, to the top area where I don't want any displacement. Uh, and then similarly, on this heel piece, or foxing piece, um, I've applied a value of 1 uh, for this vertex map uh, where I don't want any displacement. So with that out of the way, uh, we should be able to start uh, building our uh, pattern in the shader tree. So I'll begin on this heel part. Uh, I'm going to add a gradient. So I'll go to Add Layer Processing Gradient. And then in the gradient properties, uh, straight away I want to make sure that I'm using uh, the UV map. So under Projection Type, I'll change that from Solid. And I'll change it to UV Map. And then in Set Texture UV, I'll make sure I have the foxing UVs uh, as the um, UVs. And then I want to change the input parameter from incidence to sample parameters, texture U, um, so that we're uh, moving from left to right in the U direction. Uh, that should be our input parameter. And then I'm going to tweak the value in this mini uh, graph editor or gradient editor here. Um, but we won't see anything happen in the preview. Let me just launch that preview uh, window there, and I'll make sure I'm using my user camera. Uh, we won't see anything because uh, currently the effect column of this gradient is set to diffuse color. So I need to set the effect to be something um, that will receive um, or that will reflect the value changes. So I'm just going to change this to uh, diffuse amount just so we can see what we're doing. And then I'll add some nodes here. So I'll middle mouse button click to add uh, that point. I'll drag these down so they're black. Middle mouse uh, button click between them. And then I'll dra drag this up so we have like a nice little white stripe there. And if I look here, you can see what we're getting. Um, we're getting all black, and then where it's white, the material underneath is shining through. So if I actually bring up the graph editor here on the bottom, and I choose the value, uh, we can actually see what's happening here. Um, let me squeeze uh, this curve down so it's between the 0 uh, and, and 0 0.1. Or actually, you know what? It's, it's fine where it is. Let me just make it a little bit skinnier by using the box scale tool. So I'll just make that skinnier, like so. And then I'll just drag these kind of to the middle by right mouse button clicking and dragging. OK. So the reason I have the UV viewport open here on the top left corner um, is because I want to quickly explain why the stripe is happening where it's happening. Um, so since our input parameter is set to texture U, um, we're using the UV space, and the left side is 0. And all the way on the right side, right here, this is a 1. So if I look at my graph editor, um, here's 0. And then all the way over here is 1. So if I right mouse button click and drag all the way to 0, you'll see that um, the effect here is happening on this part of 
the um, heel piece geometry. And if I right click and drag all the way to one, it'll kind of wrap all the way around to this end, which is um, this point in UV space here on the right. And then if I have it right in the middle um, at 0.5, it'll be like a stripe right down uh, the middle of that heel part. And then also, um, if I want to repeat this, I can take advantage of the behaviors here. So we have two kind of boxes. Um, here's the before and here's the after. And uh, this will actually change our, um, our flat line here um, to kind of be more representative or repeat um, the curve that we have. So constant is giving us this flat line before and flat line after. But if I change this from constant to offset repeat smooth, um, you'll see that we have this kind of, um, it's not really a sine wave, like a true sine wave, but it's kind of like a repeating, um, you know, pattern. It's a repeating uh, curve. And we can do the same thing for the, for the right side. If I just change it from constant smooth to offset repeat, like so. Okay, so now that we have that, we can, uh, let's say we're happy with this for now, um, this pattern. I can change the effect from diffuse amount to what we really want, which is displacement. The issue is that um, we're going to displace this whole mesh, um, and that's why we created the, um, the vertex map, because we're going to use that vertex map to mask the inner part of this heel piece so the displacement doesn't uh, kind of displace inward. Um, so first, let's change the effect from diffuse amount to uh, displacement, and then we'll see this completely balloons out. Uh, so in addition to pushing inwards, uh, it's also pushing outwards too much and uh, we're also getting some tearing. So the vertex map will take care of all of these things. Uh, first, I'll just take this top uh, knot right here, and I'll just pull this down, just so it's not pushing out so far. And maybe I'll bring it up a little bit more. And for now, um, I'm okay with that. So as I mentioned, uh, in the vertex maps, I have a, a weight map here called Foxing Surface Weight. Uh, so in the shader tree, above the gradient, if I add a layer, and choose Processing Vertex Map Texture. Um, with this vertex map selected uh, in the properties, it will automatically set that vertex map uh, to be used in this vertex map texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it, and then I'm going to drag it on top of the gradient. And what that will do is it will kind of like sew up or eliminate that, that tearing that we were seeing, so we no longer have a gap. Uh, I'm also going to set the bias to be like uh, higher, so maybe I'll do like 95. Um, and that will just like push these out a little bit more. Uh, maybe I'll set it to 90. There we go. So that's just changing the, uh, the black and white aspect of that um, vertex map. So now I can go back to the gradient. And I can choose the value here. And I can start to tweak uh, this curve. So this curve will now uh, kind of be controlling the profile um, of this shape. So let's see, I can puff this out like so. I can grab these two bottom points and kind of break them or break the tangents so they're a lot sharper. So we're getting this more puffed up sort of look. And I kind of want to make these a little bit skinnier. Um, so I'll grab all of these points and grab the box scale tool and just pull them in a little bit more like so. Okay, so that's a look that I really like. Uh, and I'm happy with. And we're not tearing, and it's not uh, displacing uh, inward. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so the interesting thing is now uh, we can uh, duplicate this gradient. So I'll right click and choose duplicate. And this other duplicate also, um, you know, duplicated the, the vertex map as well. Um, but it's just straight up overriding what we have. Um, you know, underneath it. So they're just two identical gradients. What I want to do with this upper gradient is change the input parameter from texture U to texture V. So sample parameters, texture V. And now uh, what we'll have is a vertical uh, kind of piece there. So now instead of going uh, this way, uh, the lines are going, you know, left and right. So that's pretty nice. Um, if I wanted to make this more straight, I could rotate the actual UV map. Um, there's a better way to do it, which I'll cover, um, just so it's a little bit more uh, horizontal and less um, like oblique um, or diagonal. 
Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these gradients. So the top gradient, I'll change the blend mode from normal to, first let's try subtract and just see what it gives us. Um, so this is looking kind of interesting, but uh, let's try another blending mode. We'll do normal multiply. Okay, so that's cool. That's like kind of a, the quilted pattern we were going after. Um, but what I think I'd really like to do is uh, maybe use the texture locator to offset the, um, the UV rotation. So this is what I was talking about. This is an alternate to actually um, rotating the, the UVs for the whole mesh. So I'm just going to change the UV rotation to 45. So now we have more of like a kite or um, diamond pattern here. And then I think I'll take the original gradient and I'll make that 45 degrees as well. Um, so now it'll bring it back to like a more square shape, but it'll be um, aligned uh, diagonally, more like a, a quilt. Um, so the other thing that's pretty cool is I can take both gradients and I can change the opacity. So maybe like 50%, it'll just give us like a more subtle effect maybe like 10% to make it even more subtle. But uh, I think I'm going to go pretty high. I'll do 80 um, just because I liked how, how puffy it was. And then with both gradients selected, I'll raise up my graph editor and I'll make sure to select the value for both gradients. Uh, it's important to make sure both of them are selected. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this uh, in a little bit and just so we're going to make the troughs a little bit more um, deep and open. There we go. So there's a lot of flexibility here. Um, it's important to uh, keep both of these um, gradient values selected at once, so you edit them both. Um, if you have one selected, it'll just give you a different look. Um, it's definitely worth uh, you know, playing around with. And maybe I'll lower this to like 55. So that's a pretty interesting effect. I'm going to do this on the tread also um, with a slightly different um, graph editor profile. Um, so it's going to be just a recap of what we've just done, but on a different piece. Um, so I'll close up this heel part and start working on the tread part. Uh, so again, let me just make sure I have my tread piece selected like so. And I'm just going to flip my shoe upwards so I can see the bottom of it. And I'll make sure I have my tread UVs selected. OK, so in this. Uh, Tread material group, I'll add a layer, processing, gradient. Uh, I want to make sure my projection type is not solid, but instead UV map. And the UVs are going to be the tread UVs. My input parameter can't be incidence. It needs to be sample parameter texture U. And then I just need some values. So I'll just middle mouse button click here, bring both of these knots down, add another knot in the middle, bring that up so it's white. And then I'll change my gradient from uh, the effect from diffuse color to diffuse amount, amount, just so I can see that stripe there. And then I'll just bring this up. OK, and we'll just make this a little bit uh, smaller or shorter. OK, so there's my, my line showing up there. And again, uh, if I uh, drag this to the right, uh, because we're using the texture U direction, uh, as I crawl along here in the graph editor, as I approach uh, 1.0, um, the effect will be on this part of the UVs. Because, uh, like I said, this is 0, and this is 0.5, and this is 1. So at 0.5 here in the graph editor, uh, we have our effect right, right here. And again, I'm going to use the uh, before and after behaviors. So. Uh, I'll choose Offset uh, Repeat Smooth to get those lines um, to the left, and I'll choose Offset Repeat Smooth to get those lines to the right. Uh, now I can adjust um, this. So right now our curve is like pretty smooth. I'm just going to make it angular by breaking all the tangents with this button here, which looks like a little mountain. Um, so we get that sort of effect. Uh, now I'm going to do the same thing I did for the uh, heel part. I'm going to make this uh, displacement. Uh, but again, it's going to push the entire uh, geometry of this tread piece um, outward. And I'm going to use a, another um, vertex map to, uh, to mask that. 
So I'll change the effect from diffuse amount to displacement, like so. And you can see we're getting some tearing. Uh, so again, I'll just add a layer. I'll choose processing, vertex map texture. Um, so it's using the wrong vertex map here. It's using the foxing surfing, uh, surface weight. I just want to make sure it's using the tread, like so. And then I'm going to invert that. And then I'm going to drag this vertex map texture onto the gradient. So, it's a, so it becomes a layer mask. And now we no longer have tearing. Uh, we are getting some weird uh, like puckering here, which I'm just going to eliminate by changing the bias all the way to zero. So it just kind of like flattens it out. And uh, these striations that we're seeing, these like little micro striations, uh, they can be addressed uh, later in a render setting. Um, but for now, let's just say I'm happy with this, uh, and now I can start working on the, uh, the profile of my tread. Uh, so I'll come over to the gradient, and then I'll make sure I have value selected. And now I can just start uh, working on how high I want these uh, tread spikes to be. Um, and I can start kind of shaping uh, the profile. So I'll have a little piece here, a part here. And I'm just roughly shaping this in. Uh, I'm going to tweak it. Um, OK, so those are the pieces that I need, like so. So let's put all of these at a value of 45. Um, all of these have to be a value of 0, so they're all flat. And I also want these to be, um, I want all of these to be like uh, angled tangents, so not smooth. And now I'll just work on making this a little bit more uh, kind of roughly symmetrical. So we'll get that sort of effect. And I think for our purposes for now, uh, this is fine. It's all procedural, um, so we can completely change this if we'd like. There we go. So let's zoom in and have a look at that. So that's cool. And as I mentioned, we can get rid of those striations uh, on the side there later. Um, but if I want to have like wider um, or less of these uh, tread uh, kind of replicas, I can always select all my nodes. And let me actually really quickly just bring these over to the right a little bit. There we go. I can select all these nodes and use the box scale. and. Uh, I can start widening this, and then we'll see as it updates, we have less. Uh, or if I widen it some more, we'll have even less. Or if I scale it all the way in, um, we'll have way more. So I'm going to find a happy medium, probably about there. I think that's OK. And then I'll drop the box scale tool. Maybe I'll just grab these and bring these down. So maybe I'm happy with this. Um, but I can also do the same thing we did with the heel piece, and I can duplicate this gradient. So I'll right click and choose duplicate. And uh, right now, again, it's just overriding it. So I can change the blend mode to subtract. And let's see. Let me just undo that real quick. Let me choose normal. Oh, before I uh, change the blend mode to subtract, the important part that I forgot is to change the input parameter from texture U to sample parameter texture V, because we want to get that um, kind of reverse pattern. So right now, it's uh, the blend mode is set to normal, so it's overriding the, uh, the other gradient. So now I want to set it to subtract. There we go. So now we're getting kind of an interesting pattern there. Uh, and if you're noticing some black parts, um, there's a couple things you can do. It just means that it's poking through the bottom side there. Um, you can either lower the opacity of this upper gradient, or you can grab both gradients and come over to the value. But make sure you select both of them. So there's value 1 and there's value 2. And uh, just pull these down a little bit more. And that should do the trick. Or you can do some combination of both where you um, adjust the... Um, opacity of, uh, of the upper gradient. But now it appears to have uh, solved the issue. So that's a pretty cool effect there. Um, 
Again, I could select both gradients and I could set the uh, UV rotation to 45 degrees to get kind of like a more um, cross pattern. That's totally optional, just to make it a little bit more complex. There we go. And let me just update this and go to a 3D viewport on the left side, close up the um, graph editor. And the beauty of this is all of that work we did on the tread and this hill piece, um, it doesn't require any like modeling changes uh, since it's totally procedural. If I hit control E to bring up the uh, uh, bend tool, I could uh, bend this and, oops, not that much. Maybe, maybe like that, it's pretty extreme. And uh, all of that texture will come along for the ride. And I'll just reset this render real quick. And make sure draft displacements is off. And if you are getting some striations on the side there, uh, you can always come over to the render settings and decrease the displacement rate. There you go. But I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to undo because uh, I don't want that curl uh, to be permanent. There we go. I could have put that on a morph map, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's the effect. Um, so it's pretty interesting what you can do with just a couple gradients uh, on each layer. Um, it's really uh, a flexible workflow, and uh, it's just built for exploration. And uh, you can get a lot of really interesting uh, textures out of it, a lot of really interesting uh, patterns. Yum, yum!